I just put out an announcement so people can join. Uh, so this debate is going to be a continuation of the last debate, and some of the things they discussed were if um, SD's lifestyle can be the standard for everybody because not everybody can go out and uh, hunt their own food and it would cause like ecological problems and if it should be the moral standard if it doesn't have any room for improvement other than restricting the food intake you have and if he could just like st stop eating the animals and just eat the vegetables he grows and they also went into like health a bit at the end so if any of you want to start making your opening statements yeah, um, <clears throat> um, I don't know if, uh, like, uh, you'd want to go first, SD, because it's kind of your uh, kind of uh, proposition, isn't it? Yeah, um, I don't mind. It's, uh, like I, I was saying just before you came in, that I don't mind if we sort of wander around a bit. I'm not too, uh, I'm pretty chill today, so whatever goes, really. Um, I don't know how much you remember about the last discussion, if you ever rewatched it or anything like that. I haven't had the chance to rewatch it. Um, what I remember, if I uh, understand your position correctly, um, you grow your own food uh, and then you supplement your diet with uh, animals you hunt. Uh, is that correct? That is correct, yeah, but they're um, only certain ones and there's like also different reasons. It's not just because they're there. Um, yeah, so like it's, um, like I think uh, you were saying that your your job is to hunt these animals. No, it's it's not my job. Um, it's, I mean, I'm I'm surrounded by farmland, basically. Um, it's to the north, south, east, and west. It's everywhere I look. I can't look out of a window in this house without seeing farmland. So I'm literally a stone's throw from farmland, and I can go and shoot various animals on that land um, in order to protect the crops so that the damage is at an acceptable level rather than an insane level. And I eat those. Right. Okay. And I guess my point would be, is do you think there's a difference in intention between killing an animal and simply, um, you know, like accidentally killing an animal? So intentionally killing an animal and accidentally killing an animal. So one of the big things you were trying to say about the differentiation between our diets is that you kill less animals than me. So if I understand that correctly, I think you attribute the deaths that are caused to uh, crop deaths. Um, through the production, of, like in, in the production of crops, so like saying like you know the use of like certain like combine harvesters and so on, uh, creates ac accidentally kills animals, um, which I would agree. Like it, it, I can't, it can't be denied that um, the production of crops in this current economic system does kill animals, and um, I do believe that we should try and minimize that. You know, vertical farming and uh, other farming methods, and we'll we'll. Try and political, try and politicize those uh, those avenues. Like at a later date, I think that trying to get people eating vegan is probably the primary thing that we need to do. But I think changing my farming methods for sustainability, even even if we didn't consider animals, is is important. Um, but if we look at like you know whether who kills more animals, let's just assume that you killed less. Let's just assume that like because you grow your own crops, uh, you're not reliant upon an industry that um perpetually kills animals by accident um, and we'll, we'll say that these accidental deaths equate to slightly more than whatever you're doing because i i mean i don't know about you but I, I couldn't give you an individual figure like how many uh, animals per person like you know uh are killed like you know so no like, I, many... I wouldn't expect you to either yeah because uh, i don't think there's any there's no way to empirically uh to do that uh but there might be but i, I guess i don't have the mathematical skills for that and so let, let's just assume you, you do actually kill less. I would say that your killing less is also, it's, it's, it has to do with intention. Like you, everyone's contextually bound ethically, right? And so if I was born into a state in which combine harvesters didn't exist and we used a form of hydroponics, I would be morally lucky that I didn't cause accidental deaths, right? Now, you're saying that you're in a situation that you can produce your own food and then only have to supplement it with animal products. I'm, what I'm questioning is why don't you just produce your own food and then, like, as in grow your own food and not shoot animals? 
because if you did so you would be able to avoid all the animal suffering uh, in general so whether you're comparatively quote unquote creating better consequences than me uh, is irrelevant to it's not well it's not irrelevant but it's not the only factor involved in someone's moral um in well in someone's ethical uh like virtue we'll say like you're able to create a greater amount of good and or avoid a greater amount of harm in the world than me and then therefore your um moral obligations are higher it's like i i don't judge someone for um going along with nazi propaganda in nazi germany but i do judge neo-nazis today so it, the the moral con the contextual moral relevancy we'll call it of one's position is what affects whether someone is good and bad relative to their behaviors Okay, you said quite a lot there. Um, I, one thing that stuck out in my mind about what you said was, like, why don't I just not shoot the animals? But I, I did say that there are other reasons, and it, it's not just because they happen to be there and I can. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, that, that's the thing. Like, that's what I kind of want to delve into, because... Yeah. Yeah, because um, if it was purely for food, I would say, like, you and, and you're able to eat vegan, like, by growing your own food... I would say that that might overall be greater. And then obviously there's, um, if you did need to supplement your diet, like there is that you could then maybe even supplement it through a supermarket and the amount of food that you'd be buying in a supermarket would still be comparatively lower to the average consumer. So you may be killing less animals as a whole in general. So they empirically, the consequences are not, not even necessarily better on, on your position, but I, I would certainly argue that the intentions of your position unless you can give a valid justification for killing an animal um or w would leave you in a moral deficit yeah I, I can give a justification for killing an animal no problem it depends which animals you're talking about i mean there's primarily only two really that i kill and that's rabbits and pigeons okay so what what, what are the reasons you kill animals um well because if nobody did it, um, and all the control measures were taken away to keep populations in check of destructive animals, basically, which rabbits and pigeons are, then that would have such an impact on the crops produced that if you really did take away all control measures so that nobody was doing it, you would end up in a fairly short space of time, I'd reckon about five years, where there are so many of these animals that there's going to be next to nothing or maybe even nothing left to harvest for human consumption, which is the whole point of growing them. And that would be, uh, obviously, and then it would lead to a mass culling and, and so on, which would obviously be terrible. And I can understand that, except, you know, I think we've talked before about catch and release systems and uh, perhaps the, difficult, the, the difficulty of implementing them in some respects. Yeah, but um, TSR schemes, yeah, but you can't really do it with herbivores. You you can do it with um, carnivorous animals because they're fairly easy to trap. But herbivorous animals like rabbits, I mean, okay, pigeons aren't exclusively herbivorous, but rabbits pretty much are. Um, it's it's practically impossible to live capture them. I mean, the, one of the main one of the main issues as well is that is um perhaps the the the, the attempt, like for example within the system that we're, we kind of live and um you know like you know somewhat uh function under like capitalism it seems that the only schemes that are going to be implemented are those that are economically um viable what's the right? well i wouldn't say viable i would say economically um rewarding so rather than like a farmer or you know for example the government implementing a scheme which would be more costly and um, perhaps take more planning but overall create a greater moral outcome they're probably going to go for the um uh easiest uh, easiest cheapest route um yeah and i mean i mean hell like they do it to people i mean so i'm like i'm not going to say that it's a it's even a discrimination against animals there i, I just think it's a lack of ethical consideration in general and I'd say that's where we need to have that sort of fight. Like the the way in which we protect our crops at the minute, and the way in which we farm our crops, I think is is environmentally unsustainable from what I'm aware. Like um, the the damage that we're doing to soil through monocropping, or um, even crop cycling is not very good. Um, 
you know, depleting minerals and so on from the soil, then obviously the spraying of pesticides, polluting our rivers and oceans uh, and overall causing harm. And that's just a sustainability point is um, absolutely uh, disgusting and something that we need to do something about. And I would say that, you know, campaigning for something like vertical farming and, um, you know, measures to uh, modify farming so that these animals are unable to get to the crops. And I think one of the main drives for that change would be an economic factor in our society so if we stopped killing these animals it's very likely that we could create an economic um we could create an economic demand for um more ethical farming methods because we're no longer allowing them to be unethical practices to artificially sustain the industry um and and i think that so like if we just actually did stop killing them and we started creating a like a, like a crisis scenario where they did overpopulate and did stop killing what crops like eating what crops and so on i think we'd find that the the the, the farming methods would probably sharp change <clears throat> well i mean the, the the issue that you're going to have i think is you know in terms of what is likely to actually happen because i'm i'm interested in reality um you can't realistically <clears throat> excuse me, keep these animals away from the crops. It just can't be done. Um, it's it's nigh on impossible. And even if it were possible, the amount of money involved, it's just not something, that's not the direction it's going to go in. I think it's going to carry on under the current model. Um, so while we have, you know, this problem, there needs to be a solution to it. And killing them is what the solution is. I mean, do you have, I know you mentioned vertical farming. I'm not sure how viable that is, but I don't want to get too much into it. I mean, do you have any suggestions as to alternatives to killing them? Ones um, that I can actually be done, <clears throat> not like magic aliens that come down and stop them from eating the crops. <laughs> well, I mean, it depends. So I think that in terms of how we could avoid killing them, I think Obviously, making it more difficult for them to get to the crops is, is ideal, um, if we can. But then, if, let's say, we're in this current scenario, um, obviously, catch and release systems, I think that, although it's pretty hard to get them, I think that we should definitely try and at least attempt en masse to do so. Um, but also, um, the introduction of like gene drives would be ideal. So, I don't know if you've seen any of the gene drives and the genetic modification of, for example, mosquitoes. Um, where they've been genetically modified to create offspring, which is infertile, um, that and through the production of the, and through them being dominant genes, every time they breed, um, each offspring is going to be infertile. So, like, if a rabbit, I've, I've heard them, about it. Yeah. Um, I haven't done much reading on it, but it is a concept that I've heard of, and at the moment, I am not convinced at all that that is more ethical than just killing them. Well, I do, because I think that it just prevents them from being alive to get shot. Um, it also prevents, like, you know, the possible suffering that they would face in nature. So, like, uh, you know, like... Um... Well, I mean, they're not, <laughs> they're not just alive to get shot. I mean, it's not like we shoot all of them. Nobody's seeking to make them extinct, or apart from maybe vegans, no, but I guess. Also, but, um... They're also alive to starve to death. They're also alive to get infections and die. They're also alive to get ripped apart by foxes. Um, there's yeah. a lot of cruelty in nature that, that, that could be avoided in that case. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to look to do anything other in this scenario than balance an ecosystem. So I'm not trying to say that we need to, because I think we both agree that there needs to be some sort of intervention, otherwise more suffering will be perpetuated in the form of starvation uh, to, to these animals, for example, overpopulation than yeah, starvation. Yeah. Um, and so something needs to be done. And I think that considering the options, I think that we can either prevent them from breeding or we can shoot them when they're alive. And I think if we prevent them from breeding, that we've created a scenario where they don't have to face the sufferings of nature and then get shot. Wouldn't that eventually result in their extinction though? Because not necessarily. So like from what I'm aware, like it can, uh, it, it can result in their extinction, which would be, you know, aesthetically sad, but uh, I don't think it would have any massive effects on our ecosystem um and it can i think be localized to certain like like it can be made like but I, I mean i'm not entirely positive on the empirical uh like side of things so i couldn't give you like you know the 
uh, you know, which genes are involved and so on. Yeah, yeah. That's but true. from what I'm aware, like it can't be localized to a certain gene pool. So uh, I don't think it has to be the entire species, you know. Um, but certainly, like, uh, it's possible that it could cause extinction. Like, I think that people are talking about making certain types of mosquito extinct uh, to prevent the spread of malaria. Um, yeah, I mean, I can kind of understand that case a bit better than I can with rabbits. Well, I think it's the same thing, right? Because it's this, it's like what we're talking about is like take mo- like malaria. Malaria kills people. Uh, that's really sad because they die and it's it's horrible and they have pretty horrible death as well. So you know we, we want that we want that suffering to stop. With the case of rabbits, it, it's the same thing. I want the suffering to stop, and I don't think there is a I don't think there is a, ge- a difference between a rabbit and a human in terms of um, ethical consideration uh, of its of its uh, of its experiences. When we say like a human suffering, like a human child getting malaria. Uh, and suffering and dying is no different than if an, a rabbit got a similarly awful disease and then died a painful death. There is no difference there for me. Um, maybe the overall consequences to a society uh, and so on perpetuate the harm more. So, like, you know, families watching their children die and, you know, um, other circumstances outside of the, the vacuum of that child and that rabbit. But if we're looking purely at the value of the rabbit and the child, they're, they're equal to me in that scenario. And I don't think there can be an argument. I'm, well, I'm yet to hear an argument which differentiates that value justifiably. So um, correct me if I'm just misrepresenting you or something, but is it the case then that you view me as um, just as abhorrent as, say, somebody who just goes out and kills a child on purpose? Uh, no. Um, I've actually had this conversation with my friends before. So... Like, it's uh, it's just that I thought you said that there was no difference between rabbits. Oh, and in terms of value. Value, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, look at it like this, right? Like, um, do I think that ancient man was as abhorrent as someone now for slavery? Uh, absolutely not. Like, I don't think that a Roman who had a slave is as culpable for their actions as someone in contemporary times, uh, primarily because the 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 concepts available to them were less developed. I think that the moral concepts available to us at this point in time are developed to the point in which we can be vegan and we recognize that we can recognize that veganism is a moral obligation, that the value of an animal is equal and that it should be respected. However, our entire institutional format is dominated by an ideology which has created a power dynamic which supports uh, anthropocentric morality, like it supports the propagation of human power over the uh, or dominion over the animal kingdom. And so when people, you know, quote unquote, buy into that, um, I don't judge them for, you know, failing to question the, the dominant ideology. I just see it as a form of indoctrination. Right. Um, not sure so in other words, I don't, judge you, I don't judge you as much as someone who goes out and murders as a child, because someone who murders as a child knows for all intensive purposes within our society that is condemnable. There is no justification that is ever possibly given. Someone who goes out and murders a rabbit is usually ignorant to the the, the horrors and the damage it causes. But it, is that what you think? I'm not talking about the general population because I mean nobody really thinks about this stuff apart from a select few on the internet, really. Oh yeah, that's what. I, no, I, I think I think it's indoctrination. I think that the average individual who harms an animal is indoctrinated. Okay, in, in what way am I indoctrinated then? Well, I would say that your indoctrination would be to. For example, be like, for example, like they look at it this way. If we were to replace rabbits with children in this scenario, and let's say there were like these homeless um, urchins who who uh, stole crops for uh, uh, to survive, right? And uh, if left unchecked, they would um, they would perpetually destroy what, what crops. Would would you shoot them? Yes. Well, then y- your moral value would be uh, treating them the same, wouldn't it? Like, there's not. Like so, like yeah. I mean, this is essentially the... name the trait, which I'm I'm fine with talking about if that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's yeah. like marginal cases. I, I mean, like um, like which is essentially what I'm saying. Like in in that scenario. Now, I yeah, mean, if, I if like, there's, if I there's like no the other hope, viable, I mean, option, I would like to hope yeah. in this. In the, yeah, if there was no other option, okay. Now, I'd like to hope that you would seek another option first. Yeah. Well, sure, but if we, because I've actually thought about this, and I was going to bring it up, but you've brought it up, so great. Um. Like with rabbits, for example, they're just a really good example of this that I that I often go to. I think I can name the trait, and my answer is definitely consistent. Um, you won't be able to get me there, 
So the only thing left for you to do is try to blow it off as absurd. But I think what would be absurd is not doing it and biting the bullet on the consequences of not doing it. Well, I mean, I'm not going to try and like, for example, if like the whole point of name the trait like or, or marginal cases is just to show someone's moral system as having validity. Um, what I would say is whether your position was sound or not. So, like, for example, if a murderer would both kill a child and kill a rabbit, um, they are consistent, but then I would say that his position is unsound, it's unethical, right? So, in the situation with the rabbit and the and the child, like, if the child was doing it, if, if we're placed in, in a vacuum where there was no other alternative, I think we both agree that if, like, there was a scenario in which um, suffering was to be perpetuated to a greater degree, like, more children starve, more people die, and, you know, overall harm to the greater overall like life would be worse then we'll have to do what we've got we've got to do what we've got to do you know what i mean and in which case you're in a no-win scenario but i guess yeah, that's not so like the, the way that i thought about it i mean i, I don't want to spend hours on name the trait but i don't mind doing it a bit um like to do name the trait between rabbits and you'd have to move the relevant traits from the rabbits over to these humans and if the traits that I would name are moved over, my answer is yes, I'd, I'd shoot them. So it's consistent. And I, I don't see what, I mean, absurd is just going to be a matter of opinion anyway, but I don't see why it's absurd because if you don't do it, you're going to have to bite the bullet on really big shit, which, I mean, you can do if you want, but, you know, it's kind of up to you. So, right, well, I mean, you say you move these traits over and such, like, I guess, like... Yeah. Other than name the trait, what I would talk about, because like I think marginal cases allow us for this easier, is um morally relevant trait is yeah what well, okay, is argued in 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 uh, marginal cases. So what do you think differentiates a human and an animal that would allow the, the separation and treatment uh, that is morally relevant? See, this is one of those rare cases where I actually prefer it the way name the trait does it. Um, that's because it's a bad argument <laughs> yeah i know I, I don't think it's a good argument either it's just that i i didn't um sort of sit down and think of a way to answer name the trade it, it just follows from what i do anyway that i have an answer for it i mean I, I, it wouldn't matter if i didn't but i just think it coincides that i do um so sorry what was your question again how did you ask it so like like for example do you think there is something which did make like the, a morally relevant tra uh, trait or characteristic which differentiates an animal and a human? Morally relevant characteristic. Um, well, I, I suppose, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how to word it, so I'll just say what I think. Um, it's probably because I think practically every species out there has a bias towards its own. I mean, I don't see any reason to afford, say, a slug the same moral consideration as I do my mother. Or something like that right so you so what you kind of point to is an internal prejudice uh if that's what you want to call it i'm fine with it yeah. but then why would you say that a racial prejudice was unjustified oh so racial preference uh, yeah that's unjustified but then psychologically like, like for example I'm, i mean i'm doubtful of psychology and it's i mean it's this black people are but, still humans <laughs> yeah yeah but like um if you look at many studies, like people have shown to have um, uh, a bias towards their own race. They have, yeah, and I, I mean that still goes on today. Um, but is that just having, having so, a like, bias so, towards? It depends to what degree so, like, the bias. So, is. for example, well, like I mean, like this bias is morally relevant, isn't it? So, like I can morally treat someone of a different race, uh, I different. Like I can treat them not only differently, but in a way that would either disadvantage or advantage them based upon this uh, discrimination. You can, yeah, but I, I don't see how that and maps back you would to what I was talking about. Because the only difference in this term of prejudice is the aesthetic that you've chosen. So you've chosen um, a prejudice based on um, the on species, whilst one's based on race. It's just an aesthetic difference, isn't it? There's no, unless you're trying to say that wow. there is something about being a human that underneath the, the the bias that you hold is what's making something more morally relevant as in making something more morally valuable well hang on D do you afford say ants the same moral consideration as you afford humans um 
answer a different a difficult one because it's it's, got, it's gotta be no right because that's gonna be pretty easy to show that you don't well i, I guess the, the thing is with ants is that i'm kind of kind of torn um on whether they're sentient or not um i do operate okay when I... is, is there I didn't ants pass the mirror test i thought they did they do but they've also got a biological uh like the, uh, an evolutionary kind of purpose for passing that as well because of the way the hive works but yeah okay the... I'm, I'm willing to accept that that's fine um all right pick a different creature then i, I don't mind no, I mean, I, I get it. Like, I mean, in terms of invertebrates, it's kind of difficult. Like, any, like, so if any, if any insect was as morally valuable as a human, then one blow of a pesticide on a crop would be a genocide. Um, yeah, technically. And I, I understand that. Like, I understand that position. I suppose um, it's like. I, guess I mean, the, the ways, point of me asking I guess, that. I, guess, I mean, I, I would. I mean, I guess I'd probably, in many ways, be willing to bite the bullet and say that, let's say, this genocide was to be done to, um, like humans. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to eat. Otherwise, like, you know, none of us would be able to eat. I would probably. Um, I'd probably be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I wasn't actually going to go in that direction. It's just that. Um... Like, surely you, you don't do everything you can possibly do to avoid killing an ant, do you? I mean, that's just, you're not going to be able to function. Um, I suppose not. I, I think there is, like, a reasonableness involved. Like, I, I don't step on ants, for example, but then I do sometimes walk outside. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm sure you don't step on them on purpose, but you do accept that you step on them. Uh, accidentally, possibly, yeah. Right, well, I mean, it, it's going to be more, like, definitely when it comes to ants, because they're bloody everywhere. But I mean, do you have you I ever noticed yourself stepping more than, on an ant? Uh, I, I know. I think I step on slugs or snails more, and I just—it's horrible. Okay, but, but pick them then. I don't mind what creature yeah. it is. Um, but yeah, like a slug or a snail, like yeah, I accidentally step on them. Well, do you like lose sleep at night over stepping on a I snail? Feel you are absolutely I, I do, mortified. I, I, do feel guilt. I do feel guilt, but I don't think that guilt is necessarily morally relevant anyway. So, for example. Uh, this is what like Kant would refer to as moral sense. So just because I feel guilt, it doesn't necessarily point to any sort of moral quandary. I would say that like uh, like um, what I would say is that uh, it can do. Don't get me wrong. I think it can like uh, be useful and in identifying information that's morally relevant. But I don't think it's the actual moral, moral relevancy. It's just like a sense it gives you an, an indication of where you should probably investigate. Now I think with the with the you know killing of a slug um uh, and it's and it's death um when i step on it accidentally um i would say that is comparable uh to someone you know accidentally hitting someone with a car uh so do i drive with the likelihood that there's a possibility that i could hit someone with a car yeah sure and i'm not suggesting that you shouldn't drive because you might accidentally hit somebody with a car but I mean, the, the whole point of the question, well, I mean, I already asked it. I don't really feel like he answered it, but... Oh, sorry. sorry. No, it's all right. I'm not suggesting you dodging. It's just that I didn't really hear an answer. Like, I mean, are you, like, absolutely mortified the way that I assume and would like to think you would be when you accidentally drive over a slug or a snail? It's, I mean, if it's been raining, you're guaranteed to run a couple of them over, as you would if you ran over a kid. Um, because if you're gonna say it. that you give them like equal moral weight or whatever, then. <laughs> but then, yeah, but equal moral weight and its expression is different. So if we talk about the metaethical like understanding of value, so like for example, right, if I understand the value of two humans to be equal, do does that mean that I need to treat them equally? So like a mother, my mother and a stranger, like absolutely not. Like so, what we can understand is that what ex how moral values expressed is in relation to duty and obligation within our institutional system. So like, I respect my mother for um, like being my, I, I respect my mother and her relationship with me as being my mother and I understand her obligations, my obligations to her as different than my obligations to anyone else. Just that, as I understand like my obligations to a human as different to my obligations to a slug. Um, in both cases, if I could respect value to a greater degree, I should. 
Right, so is it a yes or a no then about the being mortified, equally mortified question? Oh, no, no, I'm mortified. All oh, right, I'm mortified. Like, if we're talking about emotion, like, no, I'm not equally mortified. Right, um, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that that's fine, neither am I. I just think it, it sounds a bit weird then when you say you, you don't see... I think it was you said it about rabbits initially. You don't see any difference between, you know, somebody killing a rabbit and somebody killing a human. Well, yeah, because I don't think emotions are what characterize moral relevancy. Yeah, but someone killing like so for example, like if someone like like uh like I don't know, like when I see a bomb go off in like a uh, foreign country, um I hear Afghanistan's being bombed again. Um I'm not only being emotionally numbed by it from by the media, but um I don't know anyone involved, um the circumstances and, and so on that's going on. Um I I might feel like, oh that's horrible. Um, but I feel probably about the same as that going off in terms of an emotional response as I do to accidentally hurting my dog in the sense that the both trigger an emotional response um, to, to a certain degree. Um, but I don't sit there and weep at night because, you know, Belarus has blown up, um, even though right. it's absolutely, um, absolutely, absolutely horrible. But that doesn't mean that the people in Belarus are of less value. I mean, like if I could have prevented the explosion, I would like to hope that I would have, like, or anyone else would have, like, you know. Yeah, of course, that that's fine. Um, it it just sounds a bit weird when you know when you said the initial thing. But and anyway, um, back to sort of putting on the the practical gloves. Um, yeah, this um, this whole sort of I just refer to it as pest control because that's exactly what it is. Um, that is going to have to continue lest you bite the bullet on the consequences of not doing it, which I think would just be completely bonkers. Well, and... I think there's not to be. I think that the the the, the consequences can be a, 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 as we, I don't know if you would agree, but can be an economic motivator for change. Um, so I think that like allowing the consequences to occur may have um moral value overall in the overall uh like you know future um but you know maybe to get there there's probably a lot of like ethical obstacles in the way so you know like it might you know perpetuate the suffering of the rabbits even because now they're overpopulated and they're going to starve kind of thing um but well, it's, not, it's not so much about them starving it's about the fact that the crops that were grown for the purpose of feeding humans won't be there because there'll be so many rabbits that they'll have eaten them all well, yeah, but I mean, like, as I said, I don't, I'm not differentiating uh, between their suffering and our suffering. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I have a, an obligation to us first. So if I, if we had to kill rabbits to survive, like, for example, it's like glad, I would kill my that. family. It's, it's like if I had to prevent someone, like, let's say, like, someone was going to steal my family's food, and I had to, like, and we're in this post-apocalyptic scenario, uh, and I shoot them. Like, it's not that the human didn't have value. It's that my family have more value than the than that you but not more value but have a greater I, I expressed my responsibility and my duty to my family before a random stranger and i have an obligation to protect their value before that strangers but that doesn't mean the stranger yeah. doesn't have value it's the same thing with the right. rabbits it's like even if we agree that we have to kill the rabbits now we should be moving away from that as much as possible as fast as possible so like we should be doing everything in our power to prevent that harm from being from occurring yeah, okay, and like my point is that there isn't really anything that is realistically going to be done in that regard. It's it's going to well, continue as it is. Well, I mean that's that's debatable. I mean that this is the that's this debatable. is the whole point. Like for what like it's a it's an economic point, isn't it? So like whether the the industry itself will be modified uh, is dependent upon economic factors. Like they're reliant upon people going out and shooting them to sustain their industry. If that was to fail, then they're going to have to put something else in place. If you were to make it illegal to hunt these animals, then they're going to have to find a solution very quick. Otherwise, the industry again will be unprofitable and collapse. Uh, the government would have to, and the government will have to intervene. And this is why I would say, like you know, the implementation of various farming methods and um, you know, attempting catch, even attempting catch and release, attempting um, to put obstacles in the way of animals, you know. Um, for the time being, while we move to more sustainable and less harmful farming methods, try and reduce suffering as much as possible in the meantime, whilst uh, moving towards uh, something that prevents the harm. Uh, and and in the case of like, and obviously this is this is uh, overall like greater society. Um, well, can so you can case... you think of an obstacle that would prevent 
rabbits from getting onto cropland. Let's just look at the UK for a minute because it's a giant patchwork quilt, quilt of agricultural land. Um, I can't. Can you think of, uh, no, but I'm, no, I'm that's what I mean. It can't be done. But uh, well, just because I can't think of it doesn't mean it can't be done, though. Like so, like for example, I'm not. Neither am I. I think. Um, I'm, I mean, I don't know that much about the capacities of rabbits. I mean, I was quite surprised at what slugs could do. Uh, slugs and snails, when I've seen them uh, overcome obstacles, my God. Oh, yeah. um, but um, it doesn't seem no matter what you put in the way like that, that, that's pretty impressive. But the thing is, is that... I've seen slugs uh, halfway up lampposts. I don't know what it is they're trying to achieve, but I've seen it. <laughs> this is a very big tree. Um, <laughs> but um, I don't know, like... One sec. <clears throat> Because for me, think, you know, it's yeah. it's about the the practicalities of it. Like, I mean, we can, you know, dream up um, magic invisible laser beams that repel the rabbits and nothing else, and it doesn't hurt them and all that. And then, you know, you can say, oh, well, I won the debate. Well, fine, but ultimately, that's not what's going to happen. You need something well, I think that dream, can I think, be done. Look, like even if we agree that the like, let's say they we agree that they needed to be um, killed at the, this point in time, which I'm, uh, I, I I'm not entirely. I don't think we have actually attempted to, uh, other means first. I think we've went for the economic, most economically um, rewarding route, as I said, of killing them first and uh, and then thinking about it later. I don't think we've actually tried to implement a system which is you know fair and just towards the rabbits, right? But if we if we even agree that, that they needed to be um, killed temporarily, that doesn't mean that we should always continue this route and. Like when you say like what will happen, like well that's like, like, like we can't use. Well, look, I'm I'm not um, pretending I've got a crystal uh, uh, ball or whatever, but I yeah, mean, that's just just we'll knowing be... what I know about the industry and what goes into it, I really cannot imagine any other but, like, solution. Like, but that's that, like, look, like even if like like the ind- like look at the industry, right? Like if, let's say the industry, if you were to prevent, if you were to stop doing it, they'd have to go and hire someone to do it, right? Even that's that's another cost upon the industry. Yeah. Um, and it's an incentive, and it's an incentive to find a way to automate the process in a way that would prevent, mean that they don't have to hire someone, so that like they would create, uh, there would be money in think tanks being going into trying to cut costs in uh, the the protection of crops, right? So like, well, see the way it works under the current model in this scenario is to create this is to perpetuate the suffering by prevent but well not perpetuate the suffering so much as not allow for the um for the ex the economic expression of uh that value to occur so like it's like for example like if i if i stop buying um um like i don't know as much as i can like uh like uh like awful boycott like you know un unsafe conditions for workers right as much as possible um and we'll, we'll move to companies that are, you know, perhaps more safe, right? Which uh, I don't think is actually possible in our economic environment, but I'll get on to the, the, how fair trades are bastard in a minute. But <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I kind of already understand that argument, so you don't have to go into it too much. Yeah, but... I mean, it, it's just, it's been offset to the consumer. The cost's been offset to the consumer rather than actually, like, anyway. But the, the like, so there's no systemic change. But the, 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 the point is, is that the, like, if we could, like, you know, um, you know, boycott like uh, one slave labor shop and um, <clears throat> or buy from them as least as possible, or um, you know, force them in some way to pay the cost of you know, um, you know, PPE or something like that. It's going to change the industry slightly. They're going to have to create. Um, it's like it's like let's be honest, right? Like, look at the um, the working environment in Britain. <clears throat> it's not like any of our employers actually give a fuck about work. Um, it's that the employers give a fuck about money and by giving a fuck about money, they're forced to give a fuck about us. And that's the way in which I would say the, to modify a capitalist system in terms of like a long march through the institutions. If you're looking towards creating a more ethical environment within a capitalist format, you've got to think of creative ways to make ethics and ethic, ethical value and commodity value intersect. It's like yeah, the... I mean, like I I have my own issues with capitalism, but I, I don't want to get too deep into that because it's kind of off topic. Mm. Um, well, I mean, it's, not, it's a not separate so topic, really. Of it as an industry, but <laughs> under the like under the way that it is currently done with these animals that we've been talking about, mm-hmm. the farmer and landowner gets it done for free. They don't have to pay anything for 
you know, to keep mm. these numbers in check. Whereas any other solution, um, even potential solution, is somebody's going to have to pay for it because it's not going to exactly. be done for free. Exactly. And that if it was paid for, it creates an economic incentive for change. So if you weren't to, if you weren't to hunt these animals, there would be an economic incentive for a farmer to not have to, to to make change to make changes to his um, overall uh, uh, farming methods. And yeah, also, then you, you want to force him to spend money that he's not currently spending. To... Yes. Right. Okay. The, um, I've I've just got to come back to <clears throat> what I think is likely to happen at that point. I really can't envisage this at all. Well, I don't see why not. Like, I mean, if we see that, like, they would have to do something. And it, I think would probably be likely to happen first is to hire pest controllers, like, quote unquote. Um, so they'd probably hire people like yourself to shoot them then. Um, yeah, but then there's still just as many of them shot. being killed. It's just that I get yeah. paid to do it. So maybe I'll go out and kill even more of them. Well, I mean, like, well, one, like, like you're probably going to get paid. Like, uh, it's not going to be like, kill as many as you can, probably, anyway. It's probably going to be. Um, you know, like uh, when, when uh, pest, uh, I mean, pest uh, controllers, they're, they're, they're going to divorce you from the from the from the from it as as much as possible. So, like, you probably get paid per hour. But the thing is, like, a wage or something. But the thing is, is that like, <clears throat> or like a certain amount of uh, weight yeah. or some shit like that. But, but the, the thing is, pest is, controllers do get paid because pest control companies exist. I mean, have you heard of Rent to Kill? Oh no, I'm not saying they don't get paid. I was, I was absolutely right. agreeing. I was just saying that, like, that, yeah, and, and saying, when, just when they're that they're hired, really, like, like, to assume that there'd be an economic incentive to kill as many as possible is unjustified. That's all I was saying. I, I think you'd have um, a lot of people getting into the pest control market then, if if that was to happen, because it's, <laughs> you know, they're going to get paid to do it. Okay, it has to come out of the farmer's pocket, whereas previously he was having it done for free. But I don't see how that's well, going to result thing, in I'm... less deaths. It could even then result well, in I'm more thinking... deaths. Well, I'm, what I'm saying is that like, if we were to create like that economic incentive, for, let's say for them to create like to hire pest controllers, and pest controllers are an economic burden to farmers overall. <clears throat> farmers are going to look for <clears throat> the most. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> Actually, two seconds. Economic... Sorry, sorry to do this. Can you excuse me for a second? I've got a DPD van outside the house. I ordered a Sunday delivery for something apart. No problem. I'll, I'll be like two minutes. Sorry. I guess while he's gone, we can ask a couple of questions from the audience. Yeah, if anyone wants to ask. I know Patty has a couple. Let me try and find them. <clears throat> you bring your robot I think, uh, Patty asked you earlier if All right, hold on alright can you hear me now I can alright I think Patty asked you earlier if you would um Hire pest control if you had an ant infestation in your like kitchen. Mm. Um, I guess I uh, probably would, yeah. Um, I, I suppose if there's no other way that, I could, that, from what I'm aware, there's no kind of way to get them out. Um, yeah, I probably would. Um, I don't think that I'm like one. As I said, like I'm kind of on the fence of whether ants are sentient or not. Uh, yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but to um. Like even assuming they were, which is what I would do anyway. If moral hazard, you know, uh, operate on the side of caution. Um, it's like uh, if there was if there was like a trespasser in my house that was preventing us from using the kitchen, and the only way I could get him out was to shoot him. I'd do the same. Yeah, so you would also do it if it yeah. was a human, right? Um, she has another question. Let me find it. Okay, I'm uh, back. Sorry about that. Okay, you can continue now. Yeah, sorry, where the hell were we? <laughs> um, oh, wait, we're talking about um, pest control. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't see how um, forcing farmers to pay for the pest control is going to result in less animal deaths, and I thought that's what you were well, trying to do. I think that might be an. I mean, like, one, economics is not a science, so there's no way to guarantee 
that there would be any this is why like political reform is as important as economic reform like so even creating like for example like the like i agree that there is like uh aspects of economics which are probabilistically true like if you do not buy a product the company's not going to have money uh therefore it's not going to have an incentive to produce the product again uh it's not always true but it's usually true like you know like it, it's very rare that a company will willfully takes a loss yeah um, I agree. <clears throat> um with the case of like farmers they're going to try and cut their losses as to, to the greatest degree possible and so i wouldn't be surprised if rather than like just because if they're paying pest control they're going to try and find a, a a cheaper more affordable solution and then i think it comes down to like the vegans and those who care about animals to try and perpetuate a cheaper more affordable solution as fast as possible which at least creates an economic incentive and a, a market for veganism to kind of push its way into defending those animals uh, which at least offers a possibility for for change, and I think on top of that as well, we can campaign to you know prevent hunting, so politically ban hunting, so that farmers are then economically forced to do something about the that that costs that is not pest control, um and and that's the route they, to go. they wouldn't be able to though. Well, I think the if, word, if anything, all you do is like drive them out of business. Well, it, well, it wouldn't because the we need farmers. So what would end up happening is the government would intervene, as it's already doing with farmers anyway. <laughs> yeah, but in what way is the government going to intervene? If, well, if, they're, no lo- if they're no longer allowed to money. kill animals to protect the crops, so we leave all the animals alone to eat all the crops. What is the government going to do? Well, the the whole point would be like whether like, whether we could implement um, a more efficient system of protecting crops. So, like as I say, like vertical farming. Um, I think, as I say, like if we have to kill animals in the meantime, as we're making these changes, I understand, but that's still respecting value to the greatest degree. It's like, it's like overall, if like, we're like, you know, if like so many people, like, I think I can't remember what film it is, like where there's, um, there's only enough food for like a certain amount of the population and so on. And, and like, uh, it might be possible for like so many people to starve, right? But let's just make this hypothetical anyway. So, like, so let's say there was only so much food for so many, so many of the population, and um, like you know, one in ten people may starve. Um, you may just have to allow that one in ten person to starve for the greater good. In that scenario, right? It's a shitty situation, but it's better than letting everyone starve. And that's kind of the situation I'm kind of saying. Like, the, the, there is times in life, unfortunately, where we can have a no-win scenario, but we want to try and at least if we like just because you can't do the ethically greatest uh alternative which is to respect all the value involved doesn't mean you're justified in respecting none of it and so what i'm saying with the with the rabbits at the minute we are in a system that does not respect it at all rabbits are not treated as having any moral consideration uh rabbits are not treated with any like uh with care and compassion that are well, shot. I, I don't i don't think i'd accept that actually that they're not treated with any moral consideration I mean, there are laws about how you can go about doing it. Like, you're not allowed to... Have have you heard of um, myxoma virus, sometimes called myxomatosis? Uh, No. Right. It's a human-invented... I think it comes in powder form, right? And it is designed to control populations of rabbits en masse, like wipe the fuckers out big time. Right. Um, It's... An absolutely horrible way to die. I have shot rabbits that I know have myxomatosis, and you can tell that they've got it because their eyes will bulge, <clears> they get like sores all over them, um, they're lethargic. If you've ever tried to, I mean, it, it'd be funny to watch, but if you've ever tried to catch a wild rabbit that doesn't have something wrong with it, you are almost definitely not going to catch it. With rabbits who have myxomatosis because of myxoma virus, you can stop in your car, get out, and pick it up because it fucks them up that badly. It's a horrible death, and it's illegal. So it's not like they they don't no, have I'm, any I'm, moral I'm glad that it's illegal. Yeah, and so it should be. I I think it should be mm. illegal too. Do you know who the biggest culprits are of putting it down? It's not farmers. It's golf course owners. It's what sorry golf course owners. I'm not yeah. sure. Um. So yeah, I mean, there are restrictions, and rightly so, on how you can go about controlling these. Like, you, you know, you're not allowed to go and burn them to death or, or something horrible like that. 
Um, mm. There are ways that are accepted and for good reason, and ways that are rejected for good reason. Yeah, I mean, like obviously, like I do think that that even in terms of killing them, there's probably more uh, humane deaths. Um, yeah. So, like, the thing is, is that like you talk about like an absolutely awful disease, um, <clears throat> like a biological weapon, essentially, um, like, you know, against rabbits. That's uh, it's really awful, and like, obviously, I'm glad that it's been banned. Um, I suppose. Um, I mean, I don't know how much how easy it is to like lure rabbits, um, other other like in into traps and stuff. Uh, in terms of. Um, your ability, like your ability to actually uh, capture a rabbit, like so. If you were to create, like, a, a you mean live like, capture? Like, yeah. 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 Like, what? What's what's the what's the chances of actually getting a rabbit into a an into a, a, a an enclosure or something like that, and then closing the door? Um, incredibly slim because it's very hard to bait and tempt them. Like with, say, if you wanted to, I mean, I've I've got cage traps and stuff. I can post your pictures and whatnot, but. Say there was a fox and you wanted to live capture that fox because you don't want to shoot it or whatever. You could do that fairly easily because they're a piece of piss to bait. It's no no more difficult than baiting a mouse or something. With rabbits, you, you can try putting like a piece of lettuce and a tomato in a, a cage trap or something. I really, really don't think you'd be successful. But even if you were, I mean, how are you going to do this with the population of rabbits that we have? It's just... I mean, it's astronomical, and that's with control measures in place. Hmm. I guess, like, what I would like to see is, like, an economic, like, for one, the, the government to intervene in general. Like, so, like, if I was to see, like, for example, cage traps to be put down, um, like, even if it only captures, let's say, one in, maybe one in ten rabbits, but there was enough traps to overall capture them, uh, at, uh, let's say one in ten, and then neuter them, you're going to see a considerable population drop. Um, and I think that's like maybe not fast do, enough, like, but even could... if it was done alongside, like so that it, like as long as we're attempting something, but it, it's the fact that we're not doing anything. To, it, to if it that. was like, say, if it was in your garden and you've just got this one rabbit, or maybe a couple of rabbits that have been a pain in the ass, they're eating what you're trying to grow and stuff, you might stand a chance of doing that, and I think it'd probably be worth a try to do it if that's a method you prefer. But when you're talking, like, global scale, you know, I mean, just look at the UK, never mind the rest of the world, the rabbit population is fucking enormous, and I think that's the first time I've sworn in this today. Don't they, don't they use re ferrets and stuff as well, though? Like Some people do. It, it is legal. You're allowed to use ferrets. Um, I personally don't. I've had ferrets in the past, but not for that purpose. I rescued them and just kept them as pets. But um, it's not massively popular. It does go on. Yeah, but like, what's the effectiveness, for example, of using ferrets to drive them into nests? Uh, pretty good, pretty good, I'd say. That if if that's pretty good, then why don't we do that? And then rather than shoot them when we get them in the net, why don't we just neuter them? Well, now you need millions and millions of ferrets and millions and millions of people who have ferrets, and you have to, most people who um, use ferrets. If they don't intend to eat the rabbit themselves or give it to a friend or something, they feed it to the ferrets. Well, this is the thing, I guess. Like, um, I'm not sure what the the dietary requirements of a ferret are. Um, do you know? Yeah, I, mean, so you, I used to keep them. You you can feed them dry kibble, but it is by <laughs> no means vegan, and their natural diet is going to be things much like rabbits, because we have we don't have wild ferrets, but we have wild polecats. And they're very similar to ferrets, and they go after rabbits all the time. It's it's what they eat. Yeah, they're like obligate carnivores, aren't they? So like the, they, they the, are, the idea yeah. of the idea of like producing a, a shit ton of ferrets is like as bad to me as producing a shit ton of cats. That, that's so, what I, yeah right. I mean that that's what I mean. Like th there's always going to be. You're just going to end up with the human not doing the killing. It's going to be some other animal not doing the killing instead. So I, I don't know if that's better on your view or not. I don't see what difference it makes who does it. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mean like if it was like, it's not better in the sense that like if the human produces the animal to kill the animal, that, that's not better. Mm. Um, like if I feed someone to a lie and I don't say, oh, well, the lion did it. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Um, but I do think that like, obviously if a wild animal like kills a rabbit, it's not morally culpable. Um, 
but I don't think either of us think that. Um, I guess like me, me main issue is like just trying to think of like whether we've actually like I, I, from from my understanding, I don't think that we've on mass like I don't think the government has invested a considerable amount of money or, or attempted to to deal with the problem. I think it relies upon people like yourself, um, you know, to sustain an industry uh, without having to actually put money into it. I think that the general population as well is apathetic to the suffering of animals uh, in the production of that food in general. Um, and I think that's like, you know, in, uh, uh, apparent within the production of uh, animal products. I mean, like, shit, I mean, they're not going to care about rabbits getting shot if they're willing to slit a cow's throat for a steak. So, like, th there's well, kind there, of that. there is that, yeah. But, um, like, in terms, you mentioned something a couple of minutes ago about, like, um, legislating against hunting or something. Um, what your pest control, I can't remember how you worded it, but. Both, yeah. All right, both, fine. Um, that would involve taking something that is currently a legal requirement and reversing the law, not just adding a new yeah. law. You'd have to overturn the current law. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it'd be, like, obviously this is possible. more drastic, but just to give an example, like, murdering people is currently illegal. It's in legislation that you're not supposed to be doing that. It'd be like not just removing that law but enacting a law that says you must now kill everybody yeah i mean I, I, again that is very drastic that is a very drastic I yeah mean, i'm not I mean, trying to say the two are the same thing it's just that it, it is a legal a requirement process, that yeah. rabbits in particular be controlled on any land it's it's in the law you have to do it yeah i am um, and uh, you know it, it is um it is sad that we're in this scenario i do think that like like, like for example, like if let's let's just, let's say we do agree that there is um like uh, let's say there was a point in which there was nothing that we could do and that we had actually tried because I, I don't I still I still think that we haven't actually I, I think would you agree that we've not really tried to do anything about rabbits in terms of pest control or we've, we've kind of relied upon hunting uh, uh, we've not really tried to implement anything that would be um, a long term solution um, that tries to respect the rabbits as much as possible. Like what I would like to see. We, is we haven't of... really tried on mass, no. Um, but I think the reasons that we haven't is because it would be a bit like trying to, I don't know, stop gravity or something. Like, what what are you gonna do to stop gravity? There doesn't seem to be much available. Well, I mean, that's a bit different, isn't it? Like, um, like, so like, I I don't know. Like, so for oh, example, really, like, it's just an analogy. I'm not... Like, for example, like if I if I Google like. Like so, for example, I'm not in the industry as much as you are, right? Um, and your obviously knowledge of it in terms of uh, being actually, you know, within the industry might be better. But I, I, from what I would say is that I think we both probably have gaps in terms of, you know, whether we could create better traps and so on. But like, if I was to do a quick Google search on like whether to, like how the efficiency of rabbit traps, um, I'm not sure if I'll find a study or anything. But I'm pretty sure, like, for example, I did one before, and it said that rabbit traps were actually quite efficient. So, like, to say that it's like stopping gravity implies, like, a situation of futility where, like, you can't stop gravity at all. Like, it, you'd be breaking a fundamental law of nature, right? Whilst trapping rabbits is a matter of, like, you know, learning to overcome an, an obstacle that we have faced. It's not, like, it's not the same as reversing a natural law. Like, yeah, and, and... it's the scale of that obstacle that's the problem. Because, like I say, I mean, I did concede that if you just had a couple of problem rabbits in your garden, you might stand a reasonable chance of doing that. But the scale on which this operation... I mean, who's going to do it? And what are we going to do with all the... Well, I know you want to neuter them or whatever. But, I mean, who's going to pay for all of this? Who's going to be the ones actually... Do... I mean, would you do it? Um, Like, would I actively try and trap rabbits if I thought it would... Yeah, I would, yeah. yeah. You would? Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I have no problem with you trying to do that. Um, if you do ever try to do it, let me know how you get on. Yeah, I'd, I'd totally do it. I mean, like, if, if, if we, like, for example, let's say like, there was a vegan charity that was trapping rabbits and neutering them and putting them back out to try and control populations, yeah, I'd absolutely get, I'd, 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 I'd join up. Um, All right, fair, fair enough. Uh, well, I mean, you, and, you, know, you could try to that. get something like that going. There's nothing to stop. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the thing. Like, that would be pretty cool for, uh, to do that and uh, i think they for example like in the situation with what you're doing it would be better to put your efforts in or something like that than shooting would you agree no, no why not 
because it would be futile to do it. I mean, I I manage. Well, let's well let's I, I say good. manage. I I have um, rights over two thousand acres of land that doesn't belong to me. That there is no possible way that I could con effectively control the rabbits on even ten acres of that land by doing what you're suggesting. It just wouldn't work. <laughs> like so, it's like. Uh, one second. I'm actually quickly. Um, if you if you want to just um, I'm just reading actually an empirical study on the trapping of rabbits, um, and one of the one of the things of like effects of continued trapping, um, like like there will be more. I think there was more um were trapped initially, and then the number is reduced. Um, obviously because there's less rabbits around, but also probably because <laughs> maybe rabbits aren't that stupid. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> it, 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 it might be it might be that. But it seems that they're actually that they are actually able to to catch rabbits. Like, I, I'm um, not I'm not denying that it is possible to live capture a rabbit. I mean, it's desperately impractical. I'm going to stick to that, but I'll grant you that it is possible to do it. But it seems like it's saying that the the impracticality isn't the the um like from this. It doesn't seem that the impracticality is the uh, ability to trap the rabbits. The impracticality is the the cost for them, like they're saying, like a, an excess of over fifteen thousand, um, compared to shooting them, I think for the same. I yeah, I mean, the... shooting them is like next to free compared to that. Yeah, which is so... you know, it's just one of the reasons why I think this isn't going to happen. But I'm fine with rolling with your, you know, what if it did thing. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, so you, you catch somehow. There's all these people with all these traps, and they're all out. They, you know, <laughs> no, I mean, like they're all out in fields catching rabbits. Now you want to have them you'd, neutered. You'd, you'd just make an industry, wouldn't you? So like you'd be like, you would. Um... Yeah, but who's going to pay the vets? Well, the government. Okay, well, the government's money comes out of the people's pockets, so I think that's another mm -hmm. reason why. <laughs> It won't ever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but, you know, they're not—they're not, like, not I mean, going to put I mean, millions and millions like, of pounds in because you know what vets charge. You've got a dog. I assume you've been to the vet. Well, I mean, point. you can also. I mean, like, you wouldn't have to do that because it would be like uh, obviously with it being on mass. It's like even even if we were to use like the capitalist model system, you could say that like they weren't going to be charging the same as a vet that's going to be doing one animal a day, like neutering one animal a day and then moving on or maybe two or three they're going to be charged like a considerably lower rate because they'll be getting a contract which allow them to create an industry which is then you know more profitable for a longer period of time and they'll be treated as like contractors at like santander or something like that so like there is like the the, the, the chances are actually more than more often that than not i would imagine that there would probably be an industry pop-up that would then start exploiting vets but like, <laughs> well i mean okay possibly they would i mean i, I think we are I, I don't mind hypotheticals but i think we are kind of in la la land with it a bit now like you know vets i mean like there's gonna need to be so many of them because there's so many rabbits we'll have loads of vets man and then <laughs> right well who's gonna pay for them to go to college and uni and get trained we'll, and we we'll already have them man we we'll already have loads of vets we don't have enough to deal with neutering all the fucking rabbits in the uk well i don't think we'd necessarily need to neuter them all anyway like, you only have to take a small percentage of the population to overall have a massive effect on it's like you don't shoot all the rabbits in the uk it's no, like because you, you we, we don't like want a... them to go extinct. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not saying that. Like, I'm not like saying that we even need them to go extinct. I'm just saying that to to replace the shooting, <laughs> we only need a, a a small percentage of them. I I what's a small percentage? Well, I, I don't have the empirical. No, no, sure, but I mean, just just put a number on it so like I can get a rough idea of what you're thinking. Well, let's say that let's say the average rabbit. I mean, what's that lifespan of an average rabbit? Like ten years naturally, but that's up to ten years. I'd say it probably lives what maybe half that in the wild. Would you say? Yeah, um, I think that's probably something close to. It's accurate. probably about five, maybe about five years, and the fertile from what the age of six, six months less, is it? I was say... it? It's a bit less than that, but I'll accept six months. It's fine. Yeah. So like six months, and, and got, like, they uh, well, I mean, you've heard the phrase shag, shagging like rabbits, right? I mean, it's yeah, <laughs> it's a phrase but, um, for a reason. Uh, so, what the hell, thirty days? Really hell, they do breed fast. Uh, they just oh yeah, man, and they have more than one at a time too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But then obviously the let's say the survival rate of those rabbits is about what do you think, like one in three? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know how I could. I don't know about the. Uh, I mean, this is there's so many factors because the variables of natural predators, 
exactly uh, yeah and, and shit like that so let's uh, let's just uh, we're gonna we're just gonna have to just fucking guess <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that that's not uh, a problem um let's just say one in, let's say like so every 30 days maybe uh one like one rabbit out of the litter of rabbits that's produced is uh able to bloody breed i'll just get a calculator that's gonna be a massive amount of neutered rabbits yeah. Yeah, so let's say so one in three. So let's say one in three goes on a breed. Uh, so let's say the total population of rabbits in the UK. And I'm I'm not convinced either that you know trapping an animal, knocking it out with drugs, and then returning it to the wild with bits chopped off is actually more ethical than just shooting it. Well, I mean, like it depends on like for example, like. Like, I would say that we shouldn't probably return them until they're healed. Uh, well, like, yes, I okay. I'll them out, like with a gape and wound. Good luck. So no, no, I, I know that. It's just that, I mean, <laughs> I don't think I'd be too fucking impressed if somebody chopped my balls off against my will. You know, it's like, what the hell? I, I'm not convinced that it is more ethical. Well, like, like the thing is, it's like, like even if we look at it like this, right? Like, even if, like, even if, like, worst comes to worst, like, the, they, they get, they go out and the, like, like, one, I don't know. I wouldn't be ethical if it was a success. So, like, if the if the rabbits actually were new dead and they weren't able to reproduce, I don't see an ethical problem there. So, there's less rabbits. Uh, that seems like a win-win, like from what we've been talking about. Um, right. I mean, you think so because I think you would rather they didn't exist at all than have them exist and have some of them get shot. Well, I mean, like what you what you said before, though, is like what we agreed is that you you could still even have rabbits if you were neutering them. You just didn't. You wouldn't have as many. <laughs> like that wouldn't destroy the population if you were neutering them. Um, it's for population. No, it wouldn't. It mean, wouldn't I, destroy I, a ideally, population that prefer, doesn't exist. I prefer no. gene drives. Ideally, I'd prefer gene drives, and we're not far off that tech. Like, like the technology. We we'll already have the technology. We just haven't implemented it as something like rabbits. Uh, I would love to see something like that. Um, okay. And 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 in terms of cost, uh, it would it would be way cheaper than um, than than anything else because it's basically just like you all you have to rely upon is rabbits having sex which is uh from what we've described well is... hang on how, how much th no no fucking way dude how, how much is this like um gene drive technology costing this hasn't been well, it's, developed it's actually, for free it's, it's, no no it's not free it's not free i mean and it won't be implemented for free either well like the yeah i mean like yeah but i mean in relative like cost it's it's like, like i'm saying like you don't have to rely upon like individually like, compared to neutering uh, you don't have to rely upon like individually capturing rabbits. Uh, you you can rely upon rabbits breeding with each other and then breeding with multiple partners and producing rabbits that are infertile, which then uh, prevents like uh, each like each um, which prevents the next generation from actually uh, you know uh, the what's the word I'm looking for occurring from, from, happening. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know I know what you mean. I know what you're saying. But the, you you said something to the like, effect of it's cheaper about, like, than the shooting cost them. Of of like the of the gene therapy right like from what i'm from what i'm aware gene therapy is actually like i don't know the current cost of, of of crispr and so on at the minute but i know it's dropping to the point in which many gene like this is how like laws dropped in recent times like many gene therapies have become so cheap that we're looking at having to stop them from becoming like available to households so like commercially like they've, they've hit to the point of being commercially available to the point in which the average consumer would be able to buy gene edit and tech and um, because of the invention of crispr so like it's it's like gene editing has really dropped in price recently right um, so what what would be like a typical cost let's say i wanted to modify my genes in some way how much would i have to pay <laughs> <laughs> because i am not buying it that this is cheaper than somebody just for example just buying something like um, a legal limit air rifle and that's going to allow them to shoot rabbits for the rest of oh, their yeah, life no, and like, next to no think, cost. I don't imagine. I don't imagine it would be at the minute. Like I don't think it would be at the minute. Like uh, that. Like someone buying an air rifle and shooting a rabbit probably for the next. I would imagine like even ten years be cheaper. But in terms of yeah. like cost and effectiveness, like overall in a like in a period of time, I imagine that it would probably like be more like for example, it's a lot easier for a rabbit to find uh, and get with a rabbit than it is for a um a guy to go and shoot them. Um, um, and I, uh, I guess because like, like, we're talking about using it as like, if I'm right, it's not simply treating one rabbit; it's a disease. 
that is passed from rabbit, like from like the, in terms of mosquitoes, I'm, I'm I'm talking here. So the way that they do it is actually by creating a disease that transmits from one um, to another, uh, from one mosquito to another, and then spreads around the population. So like in terms of being like you know like uh, like being able to spread and effectively it's uh, the effectiveness of its spread is actually they can like, that's why they were doing it to mosquitoes you know what i mean because like you, you can't like do like it's impossible like to hunt mosquitoes for example well um, sure yeah and i mean like i said you know an hour ago or whatever it was i i can kind of see the case for doing that with mosquitoes because of malaria can't really see the case of doing it with rabbits because although yes they do you know cause problems they don't like give us diseases or anything like that so I think the case is much stronger for mosquitoes than it is for rabbits. Well, in terms of human suffering, but not necessarily like animal suffering. So if like well, if we were to consider the animal, uh, like like so for example, like humans suffering from malaria is an awful disease. Uh and it should be prevented if we can do it. Um, but then obviously animal suffering is also awful and should be prevented if we can do it. Right. Um but I don't make them suffer. Well, I mean, like, like for example, like, uh, well, like, would you say that, like, you are respecting a rabbit the same, like, would you say you were respecting a rabbit's subjectivity when you put a bullet in it? No, I'm not respecting its subjectivity. I'm doing what needs to be done in the most humane way that I am aware of to do it. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I could go out there and like shoot them in the ass and just watch them bleed or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Like that would be, yeah, that'd be, that'd be worse. I agree. Um, but then, if you were to release a disease that was to make them infertile, would that not be more ethical? Sorry, say that again, mate. So, if you were to release a disease that was to make them infertile, would that not be more ethical? I'm not convinced that it would be. Um, I don't see what's Why? more ethical about it um, well because the the, the, the simply would the, you wouldn't like for example like no current rabbit yeah but you're, you're interfering with them anyway you're interfering with them okay so like but like the rabbit has no intention of actually producing offspring anyway they're just having sex so like you're not actually even denying that subjectivity they're still having sex they're just not having kids so like where's the like where's the the the, the denial of subjectivity i i'm not sure that rabbits are included in the very few species that have sex for pleasure um, as far as i'm aware that's only humans humans and dolphins i don't think rabbits are included no i mean in that. i'm not saying that they have uh, sex for pleasure i'm saying that they just have sex for like it's their drive like it's a sex drive well i'm, I'm sure they have well i think it's pretty evident that they have one but i mean i am not a rabbit i can't speak for a rabbit or get that information yeah, like, out I of mean, a rabbit but i would have thought they have some desire to reproduce i mean that's why the overwhelming majority of species have sex if they're a species that needs to have sex to reproduce to well, do I it mean, like, because they want to have offspring I don't, think, I don't think so i think if we look at like animals it seems to be fairly like it seems to be based upon like desire itself like for example, like an animal goes and has sex, not to like I I, I never see like the I don't think they've got these like uh, the the capacity to even have the concept of having children, um and 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 this like understanding themselves in the future and having a wife and kids, you know, like you know, like uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not I'm not making <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not making the opposite claim. I'm I'm just skeptical of the claim that's being made. I I think they probably do realize that this is going to produce offspring because um like no, with, I with... definitely don't man i definitely don't I, I don't think they would have the capacity necessarily to do that and then even if like well what, what if... about slugs they they reproduce via well essentially sex i mean do you think they're doing it because they want to have sex i think they're doing it because it's just an innate drive i don't think it's like a want like i want to have sex it's like they're driven by nature to to commit that act Okay, I I don't think we'll be able to resolve that particular thing because I, I don't like, think either of us is going to be able to answer oh, that no, with, no, a, I mean, with a definite. But no, no, no. I mean, it's the hard problem of consciousness, right? Like, I can't understand necessarily without like, uh, like what's going on in their mind anyway, right? But like, what I what I think is, like, uh, like from their behaviors, um, uh, it's like it does seem to me that like, uh, um, 
like you know animals like for example and they have miscarriages have the typically have the same emos- emotional response as um as as like you know more more complex animals like like for example like animals which are capable of like greater communication seem to be able to understand themselves like through time to a greater degree and so on um uh, and and animals with a less like complexity seem to have less consideration of like consequences like for example like well i'd probably agree with that when you word it that way yeah that that seems reasonable enough but i i still i don't buy it that they have no idea that having sex is going to produce offspring i can't prove it and neither can you so we we might as well just move move on from that point yeah Yeah. i think the only thing i could say is that i I doubt they'd be able to conceptualize like uh, like in terms of uh, without language i could probably make a logical argument to say that i doubt they could have the conceptual complexity to make um to make an to make the in, to make the inference that like sex would produce children um okay that's fine yeah but um uh just to answer i, something I forgot comments, how we got there <laughs> yeah, yeah it's all right just to answer something in the comments someone said that like uh what uh why shouldn't i release a fertility disease on africans and asians um well, I think there's like a good. I haven't been watching the chat. <laughs> like, uh, just that, like one, like I definitely don't want to do that. Uh, um, I think whoever thinks that way is like absolutely racist. It's to deny that subjectivity. Like, I think that if you were to, like, for example, I think there could be an argument made that you know people in Asia should probably calm down reproduction because of overpopulation for themselves. Um, then I think you could make that ethical argument. But then overall, like, I don't think you should deny that subjectivity and. You know, just like you know, force force sterilize them. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, okay, well, like I... using it as an analogy of um, you forcing like sterilization of the rights. I think that's. I, I tell you what, um, we've been about an hour and a half, which is roughly about as long as I oh. felt like going. So unless you've got something specific that you wanted to I cover, I just want to round it back to where, like, so that it kind of goes full circle, so that like it kind of completes the overall. Yeah. All right. Um, and I guess that would probably just lead it back to, you know, whether you're justified in in shooting rabbits and eating them, um, and you know if uh, uh, is it just rabbits that you eat or? Hey, pigeons as well. Pigeons, right? And and from what I'm aware, like rabbits have such a low nutrient like content that like if you were just to eat rabbits, you you can just die. You can, um, yeah. It's called rabbit starvation. If you ate nothing but rabbits, you would probably. That die, is yeah. not because of nutrients. So that's just because um they have very little fat on them. So it's because you're having a lot of protein with no fat. Ah right, okay. All right, right. Um, I was going to say I I knew that there was something about it, but um, my knowledge on that is limited I, to. I, I don't even eat fry, them because uh, I think I'll die if I don't. So, like. It's um, it, it's not that I think that I must eat some rabbits or something, otherwise I'll die of some horrible deficiency. It's not that. It's just I figure if I'm killing them for a justified reason, which obviously I do think is justified, and I think I've made a decent enough case for it, then I don't really see what's wrong with eating them afterwards. And I don't think you have an issue with the eating of meat. Some people say this is split in hairs, but I think it's an important distinction. Um, I think what you have an issue with is killing it in order to eat it. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's what I have an issue with. Yeah, yeah, that, that's why um, I thought it was because you said that last time. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. Like if you yeah. were to find like a dead human and uh, like I don't know, like yeah, like, I know. The, whatever, like ate those, like yeah, whatever. I don't really care. I mean, like in terms of like it disgusts us, like <laughs> you know, like yeah. I, I mean, that, that's all it is—is is moral disgust, really. But uh, yeah. Well, like less less moral. Like I mean, we use that word because un- unfortunately, like cultural paradigms have become conflated with like uh, ethical like consideration and like ob- obligation. Um, and in terms of like yeah, you know, like, I, I know. what is aesthetically pleasing and shit. Like we'll have what Nietzsche called like aesthetic idealism. Um, and like you know, for example, we would condemn, uh, for example, a, a society in the uh, you know, in the in uh, where was it like New Zealand for consuming their dead because it's cannibalism, even though their dead died of causes that were not necessarily like if they were to just die of natural causes and they they ate them, we would we would look down upon them as being morally reprehensible and repulsive. Yet we'll be okay with perpetuating harm upon actually living creatures, which I find far more reprehensible and repulsive because it's actually doing something like that is harmful and wrong. Um, so yeah, like there is that. But like, I guess what I would like try and say is like, in the case of with 
with what you're doing um you know like like whether whether or like i mean like whether or not we could do some maybe i'll do some research and uh, i'd suggest you try and do it as well uh, i'd say that we're both morally obligated in this scenario um to find out whether there is a solution that required not killing them so if you could find like a, a way in which you could help control rabbit populations uh without killing them that would be great um and i also think that the overall cost to the industry if you allow that to perpetuate uh is likely to be um is likely to um overall force change somehow maybe you say that it could force it for the worst i say that it could force it for the better um i'm arguing that they'll probably try and do something that would be as cheap as possible so i guess what would be the the solution there would be political reform as well um I don't think that there is like a one size fits all solution in terms of like, oh, don't worry, like, um, like he has the he has the answer. There you go. I think that what we have to do in this scenario is kind of let the the costs amount, and uh, as the urgency increases, the likelihood of creating a a sustainable solution will also increase uh, because capitalism will be forced to intervene on this moral quandary. Uh, whereas whereas now it's taking a back seat and allowing the market to be sustained um, through the actions of, of someone else. Uh, I think we could both agree that, let's say, killing, and I don't know if you would agree, but I would say that if it was possible to not kill the rabbit, then you shouldn't kill the rabbit. Would you agree? Like if you, if you if it would uh, prevent, like if you didn't have to worry about the production of crops or anything like that. I, I wouldn't agree, but it would be a separate argument, um, and it would start up a whole different debate, which I'm willing to have at another time, if that's what you want. I mean, like, my, my thing is I don't have an issue with killing animals for food. It's just that when I'm, um, and when I'm thinking about it from the vegan's perspective, which I try to do, um, I think I do an okay job at it. I, I try to bring in other relevant factors, like not made up bullshit, but like real life stuff that provides a different justification for killing them in the first place, even though I'm fundamentally not opposed to it, and you are. I mean, we're just not going to agree on that, because you're vegan and I'm not. Yeah, I mean, perhaps not, but I think, like, obviously, like, where agreement is necessarily separate to, uh, um, to what is, like, rationally justifiable. I guess, like, I would say that I, I'm yet to hear an argument which dismisses the value of an animal as being lesser than a value of a human. Um, and if someone thinks that they've got an argument for that, I would love to hear it, especially one that doesn't break Hume's law. But you kind of admitted that that isn't your position during the debate. When did I admit that? When we talked about accidentally stepping on ants and then we changed it to slugs. And so you've admitted that it's not equal. No, I, I said that my obligation towards a slug is separate from my obligation towards a human. So, for example, if every time I walked outside, it's like, for example, with Corona, right? Like, I'm, when I wasn't allowed outside at all because it would kill a human, um, I'm obligated because of the ways in which we respect value towards individuals. Institutionally, the re rationality of our system has produced it so that we consider human life to a greater degree because of anthropocentric morality. That hasn't been extended towards animals yet. And as we become more and more advanced, I would like to see uh, what society perpetually change to uh, respect animal life to the greatest degree. Overall, my subjectivity and my expression of my subjectivity is why why I'm involved in ethics in general. It's why everyone's involved in ethics. It's like because we're trying to achieve some sort of end. Um, if I was to not live a normal life and go outside, I'd probably kill myself or I'd die because I wouldn't get food or, or anything like that. So there has to be some sort of relationship. Like it's like if every time I went outside and I had to go outside, someone died, I'll be going outside still. And, and it's it's the same thing with animals. The difference is, is like how value is respected in our institutional format. It's essentially how our obligations respect value as a as a whole. So what I would say is that our, our like what needs to be changed at this moment in time is how our institutions are respecting value. We need to remove away from anthropocentric morality and move towards a sentient position. Uh, sentientist position so that we can respect value to the greatest degree um and even then like we'll we'll probably see a differentiation between humans and animals just as much as we see the differentiation between people in our state and people in other states um and i have no problem with that like i don't think i have the same moral obligation towards somebody outside of my uh, immediate uh, moral sphere as i do uh further on because of um 
my intimate relationship with them in terms of uh, how I can actually affect their life and perpetuate good. Like, I don't need to treat everyone as if they're my mom. I don't need to treat, um, you know, I don't need to treat, uh, you know, strangers uh, in in foreign countries as stra- the same as strangers in this country in terms of um, having an obligation towards, let's say, someone starving in Britain versus someone starving in, in, in Africa. Um, and, and it seems that, don't get me wrong, I, I think that we should be helping those people starving in Africa. I just think that they, the way that our institutional format works is to, it, it should be, to respect value to the greatest degree and create obligations which respect value to the greatest degree and so if we were to say that nationalism is flawed which i agree um then we were to say that you know we should be respecting people from other countries in the greatest way we can and then we should create like a charity or an institutional format which feeds people on mass um or allows people to develop um ways to feed themselves because africa has been absolutely fucked by western countries for like 300 years but even more so throughout history, like for the last thousand years, it's been fucked by like pretty much even itself. I mean, depending if you look at Chaka Zulu and shit. So like, you know, we need to undo the damage that history has done in that scenario. And, uh, you know, help them out, like, you know, like give them means to feed themselves. And if we say like, you know, we'll, we'll look at these institutional formats and we say like, you know, we're going to have moral obligations to people and we do have moral obligations to people. How do we respect value to the greatest degree? I think that's something that should be perpetuated for humans and animals. Uh, and that, that's that's all I'm really saying. So when I go outside and I step on a slug, yeah, I feel bad, but I don't think I'm doing anything that is not respecting value to the greatest degree uh, in terms of my institutional format. There is no other means to respect value at this point in time. If, I mean, if you if you've got any like plans to in, introduce some sort of hover skates, um, I'll, I'll wear them. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I I don't have plans to do that. I I appreciate you joking a little bit, but it's because I don't really have to see an issue with people stepping on ants. But I mean, again, you you said quite a lot there, and I can't. I'm not going to respond to all of it because I can't even remember all of it. But I think. If I listen back to this, I think I might, and I'm only saying might, not definitely, I think I might be able to find a contradiction in your view. Um, how much time have you got left? Um, probably about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour. Perfect, um, that, that's about how much I've got. So if you're okay with it, I don't. I haven't been watching the chat. Um, I don't know if there were any questions, but if you're fine with taking some, if, if there have been, um, we can hand it back to Brandon to read them out. Yeah, there's been some questions. Just quickly, did you want to like talk about objectivism at all, or like because you've only got like twenty thirty minutes? We, we might do it. Time. We might do it next time or something. Cause, yeah, uh, right. you know, we we can just have another debate sometime. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So, just it's uh, nice to have something that's on applied ethics anyway. So like, uh, I never get, I never get. It's always, it's always. Uh, I mean, I live in meta ethics. I think, like, SD, you probably know that from watching my shit. Like, it's uh. Yeah, I mean, we did get into meta ethics a little bit, but then we brought it back around, so that that was good. Yeah. Yeah. So just for everybody in the chat, so they know, you can uh, now unmute yourself and ask questions to either party, and you can also post your questions in VC text and ping me, and I'll read them out. So we've got uh, one question from Eden. He says he'd like to ask why the constant referrals to both slave trade and the suffragette movement in regards to them changing the moral consensus among the larger population in favour of the move- movement as every country is largely carnist. In summary, does PP believe? PP okay, believe yeah, like well, every country that was... the vegan movement represents a beginning of an ethical shift in human species, and does he think it will become the primary doctrine? Uh, yeah, I do believe it will become the primary doctrine. Um, I do think that it is a logical progression from anthropocentric ethics. So assuming that our ethics are developing um, in a logical format, and which I think they are, um, if things were to not be influenced by power structures which are implying uh, rationality separate from that institutional format, like, for example, uh, totalitarian government comes in and implements law um, or, or, you know, um, religious doctrine comes and sweeps out, you know, all the current institutions and so on. And we're, you know, we're going to like some sort of religious fundamentalism or some shit. Um, yeah, I do see ethics progressing to um, ultimately uh, move anthropocentrism to sentientism in terms of the dominant ethical ideology of society. I think that it will modify dependent country to country. So like, for example, I would imagine that the, uh, even countries in like, in europe will 
progress at different rates. Um, and then countries outside of Europe, like, for example, Israel uh, seems to, make, with all of its human rights problems, actually, in terms of how it's treating Palestinians, um, seems to be implementing veganism quite quickly. And, um, you know, like, Britain seems to be doing quite good, um, you know, whilst countries that are probably more ag agricultural, I think Ireland is doing a little bit worse than Britain. Uh, because of its agricultural kind of roots. And I think that, you know, Germany and France probably is going to have some sort of um, maybe like contention there because they have this idealization of peasanthood. Um, so I could imagine things like that happening. But then again, like it seems to be growing quite well there. Uh, the United States, um, well, I mean, the United States is one of those places where it's like religious doctrine is still very prominent. Um, uh, even pre Enlightenment understandings of religious doctrines, so like religious fundamentalism. Um, literal interpretations of the Bible, um, you know that kind of like uh, like God hates gays kind of mentality even perpetu is perpetuated in some places in the United States. It's fags, um, not gays. Get it right. <laughs> I, I'm like trying to be. Like, That's what the signs <laughs> say, man. I've seen them. For fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> but um, like uh, like you know the this is the thing like there is uh there is a lot of prejudice and bias there anyway towards humans so like you know i don't expect it to have to develop towards um uh, animals any faster um i think that there's also like political splits and the fragmentation of society and so on in terms of media and stuff also plays a part in power power systems and stuff but at the same time yeah i do think that we're moving in that direction um like the direction towards like the liberation of animals and the emancipation of animals um and I guess like that phrase there is why I connected to um, slave trade. So the, one of the reasons why I connected the slave trade primarily is because of uh, uh, it's because of the comparison made by Jeremy Bentham um, in the in the 18th century, uh, in which he compared. He said he, he, at the time of the removal of slave trade, he, he said like you know um, the French have realised that the the darkness of skin is no justification for um, for the for like mistreating them. And he goes on to say that, you know, uh, what, what is it that should trace the insuperable line? Is it the faculty of reason or perhaps the faculty of discourse? A full-grown horse or dog is by far a more communicable uh, and rational animal than an infant of a day, a week, or even a month old. But if it wasn't, what would it avail? It is not can they reason, nor can they talk, but can they suffer? And then he goes on after that, which we don't normally include, to say why should the law uh, not extend its protection to any sensitive creature? And that's essentially why I, why I make this position. Because if we accept that like someone in Jeremy Bentham's position should advocate against slavery, at that point in time, he's in an institutional format in which slavery is seen as both justified in terms of the moral norms of society, but in terms of the rational extension of that position, it's unjustified. He can, he can reason for himself and come to the conclusion that, wait a minute, all the excuses that we are using to enslave these individuals are absolutely wrong. That's the, that moral reasoning is the comparison. It's not to say like humans and black people and Asian people and all that and animals are all, you know, um, morally equal. Like I'm not comparing like, you know, like, uh, like, I mean, like morally equal in sense, like I'm not comparing like some sort of, I'm not some sort of racist trying to compare like, other races to animals and stuff like that because i think that's absolutely vile and what i'm trying to do is show that moral relevancy is based in our institutional understandings and our moral reasoning and in terms of moral reasoning there is no justifiable difference in treatment in the treatment of animals and the treatment of humans in terms of perpetuating the greatest overall value now the slave trade is very relevant to this because of how we treat animals in terms of actually keeping them captive, uh, actively violating their will, and actively, um, you know, treating them as a means to an end rather than an end in themselves. So that's why I use it. And also, there was an essay wrote by the founder of the Vegan Society um, in the 1940s, 50s, it's either late 40s or early 50s, uh, entitled uh, On the Emancipation of Animals. Uh, in which he compared um, the um, the uh, the enclosure, the enclosement of animals, the 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 way in which we keep them now to 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 the slave trade, and I think that in terms of treatment and lack of moral consideration for the beings involved, 
there is a definite, an, definitely an analogous situation there. Yeah. Okay. So, does anybody else want to like mic up and ask a question? Or... Hey guys. Um, yeah, I I could ask a question. I actually have a question for both SD and Perspective, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Cool. Um, SD, can I uh, ask you the question first? Hey, if you like. Okay. Cool, man. Um, so I think uh, the the debate was like your diet was more uh, ethical than Perspective's, right? Uh, and I think I think you make a really good case because. Um, you're you're only killing animals that sort of are invading and encroaching on your lands, and then, uh, you know, to not waste them, you're making sure that you eat the uh, the meat from those animals. Um, I was just going to ask you for the average person who you know buys their food at like a supermarket or something. Uh, do you think for that kind of person, just for the average person, do you think veganism uh, would be a better switch for them? Not really, because um, although this, I admit, it's quite difficult to prove to somebody. Um, if if you take a vegan who's buying their food at a supermarket, which, I mean, most of them do. I, I'm not actually aware of any that actually grow their own stuff. Um, then there's going to be more than one animal that died for whatever was on their plate for that meal, right? And... If I go out and shoot one rabbit and just eat that that day, well, I know that's one. So whilst I can't give you an exact quantity of animals that are killed for, say, I mean, I, I don't know, whatever maybe perspective philosophy had for his last meal or something, um, it's going to be more than one. So if you're doing, like, death count ethics, as it's sometimes referred to, then, right. yeah, I, I, think, um, I think I'm responsible for less, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, if I just chime in there, like, so I guess my position on that would be um, slightly different. So, like, I think with SD, he's kind of saying that, you know, if, like, if we talk about the average vegan, like, buying food at the supermarket, would they be a more or less valuable? I think that if, I'm, if I understand Artemis correctly, like, the average person buying food at a supermarket would also be incapable of, uh, would have to, would be buying meat at a supermarket as well. So, I guess the point I would say is that, you know, the, the production of crops for animals is actually much greater than the production of crops for humans. So the overall crop deaths alone in terms of death count is actually to, for the average meat consumer, not SD in this scenario, because he is going out and uh, hunting animal one at a time right. uh, would be at a much greater degree. Like the average, the amount of animals dying um, for the average meat eater is always higher, not just because they are dying uh they are act actively killing more than one animal i mean like, like look at it like this right the average uh the average meat eater eats a considerable amount of chickens a year it's like 300 and, it's over 360 right and they're not just eating chicken um like on average so the, the, there's a lot of chickens dying alone and if you look at like if someone goes and gets a bargain bucket from uh kfc uh last time i checked chickens didn't have 10 legs so, sorry what, what was the number i'm sorry to cut you off but what was the number you put on that i didn't quite catch it was that, I think the yeah, about three three sixty. What each each person who's not vegan is eating three hundred and sixty chickens a year. Yeah, in total amount of deaths because they're like eating component parts of chickens, so like multiple limbs and shit. Oh right, okay, yeah, I thought you know. Fine. Um, so like for example, like that's the like so for example, if they're having like a, a bargain bucket with ten legs like in it, like you can't like chickens don't have ten legs, you know. Right. And and that that's kind of the. The, the, the point as well but like in terms of like even if they were trying to eat as minimal amount of meat as possible um in that scenario they would still always be better eating uh vegan because they could avoid feeding animals uh, uh avoid feeding animals uh the crops that they themselves could consume uh, and therefore there'll be less crop deaths um in terms of growing your own food like for sd i would say that if sd is capable of growing his own food and not harming any other animal then he's morally obligated to 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 grow uh, and this is just purely on food consumption like there was the second debate on the separate kind of point on whether we need to control uh, animal populations but if we're talking about purely for food consumption there is no necessity for sd to kill animals and therefore the, he shouldn't kill animals would be my would be my my point and that to point to a morally lucky scenario that uh, like consequentially lucky scenario that he is able to grow his own food and so kills less animals overall doesn't justify him taking an, a life of another animal by itself which is why yeah, he had to give i just the... think that would be separate from the proposition that he 
he's acting more active well no no because it's like it, what i was it's, it's not there's, because what we're there's saying always is, room for improvement yeah well like it's, it's not separate because it's like um i'm not a consequentialist so i'm not saying that it's a numbers game alone like the terms of intention have a have a morally relevant have morally a moral relevancy upon the debate like like someone who accidentally doesn't harm anything but would be a serial killer otherwise is not necessarily a better person uh, or, or acting more ethically if they're attempting to kill something but then failing they are not more ethical because i'm not a consequentialist but a consequentialist would say they were i would say that's misunderstanding the nature of moral reasoning and ethics well not all consequentialists would say that but anyway artemis uh, did you have a question for perspective as well uh, yes, please. This won't take too long. Uh, perspective, um, I just had a separate question for you, man. Um, as far as I know, you're not an anti-natalist, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think at a few points during the debate, like you were mentioning, uh, we can genetically modify mosquitoes so they don't uh, give, uh, you know, they don't have future offspring that can procreate. And I think even with rabbits, you were saying we could, uh, instead of killing them, we could neuter them so that they don't have any future offspring. Um, could you reconcile that for me? Because that sounds a lot like antinatalism to me. Um, right. So, like, I'm not an antinatalist, um, primarily because um, I don't know if you're very um, like involved in the antinatalist sort of arguments and stuff. Like, uh, there's like the asymmetry argument, uh, like Benatar is the primary argument given. Um, antinatalism as a whole relies upon um, the that it's always immoral, always unjustified uh, to have uh, children and reproduce um i don't see a logical argument for that i think that there could be scenarios where it was more ethical to have children or at least not unethical now okay. um that's the only reason i'm not an antinatalist i think that in terms of individual scenario contextually you could say that producing children is unethical not that it's always unethical but in this scenario would be like if you have like let's say let's say i was starving and uh, I couldn't feed my children, and I decided to have another child, even though I knew it was going to starve, I would consider that unethical. Um, does that mean that they should never have children? So like if they're, you know, so they, they were to, you know, gain, you know, the ability to feed themselves and, you know, they, they you know, like I was to man man magically like pop up like, I don't know, 10 stores of food and I could feed all my kids and so on like that. Like that doesn't make it unethical, but like the consideration of like contextual circumstances is, basically what i'm saying like it's the same as any other ethical quandary yeah. um does that yeah. answer your question artemis it does thank you thanks Sweet. thanks a lot perspective Hi. and nsd for answering the questions the, the uh, politics. do you have a question to ask maybe you can't unmute right now anybody else got a question well, I know someone said, uh, was it uh, Patty said uh, that I constantly shut on the USA? Um, I, I mean, like, if I seem critical of the USA, it's because I'm critical of the um, political environment in the USA. I do think it's incredibly dogmatic. I think that that's partly because of its very capitalist um, institution. Um, I think that there's a lot of problems within the United States and that always brought to our attention. So if I sound like I'm being critical of the USA, um it's because uh, yeah i am but i'm also critical of britain um i'm also critical of many places in europe i just think that the usa has some pretty horrible things going on and yeah yeah i think uh dantas has a question so if you I want can, to unmute I yourself talk now uh, oh, yeah. can you hear me we can yeah well uh okay so it's for sd i apologize if it was already debated or already asked but uh the same case with what you do with uh the rabbits and you hunt them etc um if it were with like humans or etc uh would you do the same thing and obviously like we would add that you wouldn't be unhealthy or something from hunting these humans and like they're like um i don't know as intelligent or you couldn't communicate with them like etc like kind of the same situation you know yeah, no problem. Um, it, it was already discussed, but if you weren't here at the time, that's fine. Um, yes, the, is the short answer. Um, it's, you know, name the trait, which we went over briefly. If you move the relevant traits that I would name in rabbits over to humans, um, yes. Um, so it's perfectly consistent. And 
I don't see what's absurd about it. I think what would be absurd is biting the bullet on the consequences of not doing it. So, yes. Right, does that answer your question, Pontus? Yes, thank you. All right, Patty Politics is now able to speak, so do you want to ask your question? Yeah, no, I was just going to ask the Spectre Philosophy if he grows any of his own food. Um, I don't. Um, I don't grow any of my own food. Uh, I would like to. I don't have any land. I don't have anywhere to grow it. Um, um, I'm actually. I was looking into trying I'd to grow. I'd be happy to provide you resources. I'd be happy to provide you resources on growing food in small, small spaces. Yeah, yeah. No, I was looking into it. Um, like from your yard. Um, like obviously time restraints included because I'm also a full time like carer for me. Well, I'm not full time anymore. Uh, because of my PhD, so I'm I'm doing my PhD full time and I'm also doing youtube and trying to make a living but like i also care for my mom so like all this trying to juggle it i'm trying to think of like how could i you know like limit me uh consumption of uh like you know like try and make it as more, more ethical as possible and uh one of the things i was thinking about is trying to grow me on potatoes even because potatoes are sim apparently pretty simple to grow um uh, and yeah just trying like that sort of stuff out um i think we're pretty cool and therapeutic anyway so i think i'll just enjoy it like even even beside the point of it being more ethical. Um, so yeah, like uh, I, I was actually looking into how to grow food in small spaces because uh, like I have a tiny little yard out back which gets very little sunlight. But I heard potatoes can mm -hmm. kind of thrive in that condition anyway. Yeah, uh, a lot of potatoes, lettuce, a lot of that stuff. Do you think that, um, do you think that vegans have a moral obligation to grow their own food? I think if they're capable of growing their own food, that they are and it's by and large um like you know like like um able not only are they able to do it but it's not causing them a great disadvantage towards their life in terms of uh overall creating like a uh, uh like a scenario in which would um prevent them from like working normally and you know having like you know sustain like helping their family and shit like that then uh yeah i don't see why i, I wouldn't yeah. i would say that you have a greater degree obviously a greater obligation to like for example not consume animal products um, because of the, the the harm perpetuated but if you can you know value uh per perpetuate value in any way you can i'd say that yeah you, you can have a you'd have an obligation of that hmm. so i probably shouldn't ask this because i'm pretty sure it's going to give me a headache but i, I i'm it's, sometimes things are said such as if it's convenient to them or if they can do it does the moral obligations end just because it's not convenient to someone so for example no I, um I, hold, hold on so sorry. for example like there are people um and i'm going to use like the maasai people in africa because they're nomadic people that travel along with herds they don't have any other options because of the climate to grow uh all sorts of vegetables and stuff although they do grow things like yams but those are typically like dry season vegetables that they can mm -hmm. grow because it doesn't take a lot of water so them raising cattle for food blood and milk does is it is it still immoral just because because they're doing that or is it well, no longer immoral because it's uh not convenient for them to do anything else well it depends on what one convenient separate from like can't like so possible is different to like 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 convenience isn't it so like whether they're able to survive without them is separate right um that will be like a big thing for me so i'll be saying like if if there was like if we had no other, like, let's say we were born obligate carnivores, for example, and we had to eat meat, and I would say, like, we should just do it in the most ethical way possible. But we're not, so we we have the possibility of, you know, eating herbivorously. Now, with the... Some people this, do. Well, everyone does, but we'll get on to that later. No. Um, like, in terms of, like, the possibility of, like, actually being physically possible, I mean... Like unless you're saying that not everyone, unless you're saying that everyone, like there are people that would require meat products to survive. Like in terms of biology, oh, yeah. not not in terms of circumstance. Well, okay, so in this in this example, I, I'll leave biology out of it. In this example, I'm using an example of the people who do not have yeah. the ability okay. to 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 um, do it because of weather conditions or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the same for these people. Like if if they 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 have no possibility in this scenario, then that's that's not unethical. Or implies can. Um, I don't judge them for doing it, right? And, uh, and the same way, I wouldn't judge like if it was like you know the people on Easter Island for eating each other. Uh, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't judge them for that either. Or like you know the plane crash in the Andes and they had to eat each other there. 
like no nah, don't judge them either cool um no i mean you would judge someone if they went out of their way to kill something and to kill another person even yeah, if they were living on easter island you you would go out of your out of your uh you would judge someone for killing another human to eat them so I, i'm just confused about why it, it seems well, like if more if you're if through your moral system morality being objective the the reason for you killing it the, the immorality is still there doesn't matter if you actually need it or not it's still an immoral action well no that's not how that works like so like what you're looking at is ethics like you you, you conflate ethics for example with like the actual understanding of value so like something can be like valuable um in terms of let's say like i could say that like individuals are equally as valuable to each other and if i was to say that an individual was to like the whole point of ethics is the expression of subjectivity and so if they're not if if like an individual would to d would die otherwise that subjectivity be, be entirely annihilated then anything that they do would be considerably more ethical uh, than if they were to do the opposite i don't think that you have an obligation to kill yourself um in any scenario like to allow yourself to die i think you you absolutely um you're absolutely justified or at least not unjustified in acts of self-preservation in like if, if you're in a plane crash in the andes and uh you eat someone's corpse or you kill someone to eat that corpse no, I see think that, that's not that's not the that's not the example that i'm giving see this is i i don't feel like my answer is actually being satisfied look okay. I, i'm talking about i can make it someone... back to the messiah if you would rather well, so like yeah, i'm talking about the example hold on the example that i gave in this instance we have live cows and we have live humans you said hmm. that it's fine. You wouldn't judge someone for eating a corpse. But the the example that I'm raising is within the same parameters of a live animal being eaten. Yeah, and, so and then I said, about... and then I, I, I then said afterwards, I qualified it with saying, or uh, if they were to kill someone and eat them. So you wouldn't judge someone for killing someone if they were on Easter Island and they killed someone to eat them? No, I don't think that we should judge them. I don't think they're in the same, like, the, if ethics is the expression of subjectivity in the system of drives which allows an individual to you know function and be free if they're in a situation in which subjectivity will always be um will always be rejected either their own or someone else's uh, i don't judge them no ethics doesn't is the ethics action doesn't apply. is the action is the action still immoral um in that context no mm. Okay, I'm not sure I agree. I, I, okay, I'm because satisfied with your answer. I, I'm satisfied with your answer because you're not contradictory, but I disagree with it. That, that's fair enough. But I mean, like the difference is, I, th I suppose that the reason that you'd probably disagree is probably because of absolutism. So like, I'm not a moral absolutist. I'm a relativist in terms of um, like context and, and, and uh, what is possible and, and, and available. But even if you were a moral absolutist, if you were to say that there was a possible, if it was impossible to do otherwise, um then obviously like ought implies can and you, you weren't able to do otherwise anyway no, so. I, I don't i don't even think i don't, I don't even think i'm a moral absolutist for example i don't believe in murder and i don't believe in killing another human being on on my end but i will absolutely shoot someone who enters into my house and means me harm so i'm not some sort of moral absolutist about the concept of murder the reason right. i think i disagree with it is because you're offering up the position that it's <laughs> So I don't know if you've heard Avi and, and, and ask yourselves argument about why should we why we should eradicate um, lions or whatever. But to me, this kind of sounds like something stops being immoral if you absolutely need it. And it seems, for example, yeah. like if a guy absolutely needed sex and he went out of his way to go rape a woman, that still seems immoral to me. Well, so I if don't, someone I don't absolutely that that's needed food, possible. I mean, like, there's no such thing as absolutely needing sex to the point of raping a woman. That's just I understand like, that it's not. I understand that it's not. It's a hypothetical. I understand it's not possible, but so is, <laughs> so is um. I mean, so is like me getting stranded on the Easter Island or something. Not exactly possible either. So, uh, I'm just. <laughs> I mean, like, if you were to give us she scenario, just raised that hypothetical. Yeah, to I get it. Like, show and, her and let's, position. Let's qualify the hypothetical to make it like perhaps more more like effective towards the point so rather than let's just say it being like a, an impulse or a drive which is absolutely like uh, pre prevalent within an individual we instead say that if the individual does not go and have sex that they will die like stupid hypothetical um but you know like if they did not like you know like you know they're the last two people on earth they're, they're trapped in together and if the guy doesn't have sex with the woman he's gonna die uh, the woman says no should he have sex with them 
I don't think he's wrong for having sex with her. I think that it's not even it's not the same thing. It's uh, I'm not it, talking it, about it, sex. I'm talking about rape. They're not the same thing. Well, I, I agree. I, I mean, like, but I, I would. I, I'm. I'm. Whether I would. I mean, if we consider rape to be, uh, it, it's unjustified sexual act, and I, I do believe that in many in, in in against another individual's will. If we just qualified it against someone in, in individual's will, it would be rape. If we say, would it be a crime, as in rape, uh, what we prosecute people for? if he had no other alternative and it was absolutely necessary in this scenario because he was going to die otherwise and that's the only reason that it was going to occur, um, then I don't think it would actually hit the parameters of that crime. Um, and that, I think that's the important thing. Uh, it's like, I, I don't think it's murder to kill someone. I, I, I think, in... I, yeah, I, no, I understand what you're saying. Um, I still think that the United States government would prosecute someone for rape for that. Oh, um, I, 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 I doubt they would. And, and I mean, I can give you an I believe that Britain. they would. I, I, mean, I absolutely I, believe that they would. I think that the fact that a woman standing up there crying and screaming because she just got raped by a guy with extreme blue balls is probably going to get a lot more. No, come uh, on! Care. I did not say that. I said the guy. Let's say the guy's got a bomb attached to him or something like that. Like it's not like oh my god, he needed it. Like it was a desire. That's not the crack. It's more like I think you're straying away from the ethics when you go into will they be prosecuted. Like, yeah, no, and I, I'm not I, even I talking about think, legality. I'm still true. talking about. I'm still talking about whether this is still morally wrong i'm not even talking about legality yeah I, I i honestly think like like for example i don't think that someone who's like and i think like to make it like another scenario which is just the same uh in this in terms of being able to act if you were to put a, a suicide vest on on someone and say i will detonate this if you don't go and shoot someone then you are not morally culpable for that. Like, I don't know, like, an, another another example is, like, for example, child soldiers in Africa who are made to kill their families um, because they've got a, bun a gun to their head. Like, I don't think that those people are morally reprehensible for killing their families. Okay, like, that's fine. I, I think we should move on um, and see if no, anybody like, else no, any no, other I questions. Like, I would like Patty to answer whether she thinks that we should prosecute uh, child soldiers uh, who kill their families when they have a gun to their head. No, I don't think you should prosecute them. Well, this is why difference? I said, I told you that I'm not a moral absolutist. The problem that I had was that I think in our last discussion, you and I think Wolf wanted to raise this question, but the problem that it seems that in our last discussion, you even raised that if someone needed to kill, for, kill an animal for survival, that it was still immoral. Was that something that you said? No. Okay. All right. And that's fine. If we got that wrong, then that's fine. Okay. And it just, I mean, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm fairly frustrated with this is because it seems to me there that when I present a scenario, which is exactly the same, like, for example, you, you trying to frame it as if I'm saying that it would be okay for someone to rape someone if they had extreme blue balls is absolutely irreprehensible. I'm, I never talking about, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the same thing. I, so when I say extreme, we're using two different words. When I say extreme blue balls, I'm talking about the same thing that you are. I'm not saying that this is like some guy who like just needs it. I'm saying the same thing that you are. I just use different terminology. Yeah, and the same thing. I, and what I was saying is that the guy would die, as in you'd, you'd, you'd collapse over dead, keel over Yeah, gone. I'm talking about the same yeah. thing. I'm talking okay. about the same thing. Yeah. But then when I gave an opposite scenario in which involved the child soldier having a gun to his head, you said that that was mm -hmm. different and we shouldn't prosecute. But I don't understand why. Yeah, my confusion, you... my confusion is about whether objective morality, whether, whether something stays morally wrong, regardless of the reason that you're doing, it's still a morally wrong action. But you're saying, no, there are, there's, uh, I guess, context to the situation. Yeah, like ought implies can and the expression of subjectivity being possible. Um, I, so I don't more... understand that part, but I understand what you mean. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, yeah, that's fine. I sorry if you felt like sorry if I got you wrong. I got you. I don't know how to even. It's okay. Frustrated. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. So, anybody else got any more questions before we wrap this up? Feel free to unmute if you do. Okay. It seems like. I want to say one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just, uh, yeah, pe uh, petty politics. Aren't you like, uh, like, don't you follow Divine Command Theory then? What? <clears throat> yeah, wouldn't you follow the bank Divine Command Theory? 
I can't understand it. Um, he's, he's saying, he's saying, do you follow divine command theory? So, like, that's essentially like if God says something is good, that it then it is good. Yeah, I'm a Christian religious person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got gotcha. you. So, like, so, yeah, she, yeah, she gets her more from Christianity, of course, or the Bible. Um, we end up in the. Like, I think the the. I don't know if he was asking that, but like, I guess the the main reason why people bring it up is because of like kind of like the Euphro dilemma. You know, is something good because God says it is good, or is it good because just or, or is it good and that's why God says quickly, it? Uh, it seems like nobody has any more questions for the people involved in the debate. So, perspective or SD. So, I think we should wrap this up and then Zemanak can ask Patty a question if he wants. Uh, oh no, that was my only question because I'm. I do also believe in divine command too. So. Yeah, it, it's just um not for one of the people who had the debate. So the qu question time after the debate is supposed to be for each party who was involved in the debate. And you can ask them questions about the views they expressed in the debate. So this is uh, just yeah. separate to question time. You can ask Patty that if you want, but we should wrap this up. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm down for wrapping it up. Um, perspective, thanks for showing up almost on time. We were a almost, bit, almost. A little bit late, but we won't give you too much shit over it because uh, you did turn up. So, yeah, um, good discussion, as is often the case. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm down for having another one because there was a lot of things that I intended to talk about that I didn't get to talk about, and it's probably the same for you. That's just the nature of debates, I guess, sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah and we could do another one at some point if you'd like. Yeah, and I mean, like, even if we're looking at like the, like, uh, I'm doing more research on the empirical side of things. Um, I could certainly do more with no, more knowledge on um, the eff the effectiveness, for example, of trap and release schemes and so on, and uh, even the current possibility of implementing gene drives. Um, yeah. Okay, like, well, that's good. That's good numbers. for me. That's good for you. <laughs> Um, like I say, I have recorded this, um, including the screen, even though I wasn't watching the screen. I'll put a, when I upload it, I'll do it later today. I'll put a link to it in the um, archive channel in the server. And if you want to re upload it to your channel, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you again, SD, for, for the debate. And thank you, everyone who, who listened and uh, asked questions. Uh, I do appreciate at least having the opportunity to talk about such things. Okay, I'll stop the recording at my end now. So if you all want to shoot the shit about whatever, I'll be around for well, I'll be around for a little bit yet. So um, you just won't be getting recorded. Yeah. Um. Before I shoot off, I'm just going to essentially say, um, like, uh, just just to you know, with Patty, when you said, um, you think that someone would still be prosecuted for committing, um, a, a crime like like in if they had like a gun to their head sort of scenario, um. I can give you an example of actually where that didn't happen. So it was a considerable long time, considerably long time ago. I can't remember when, but it was in it was British uh, sailors involved, and essentially um, the it was the the eight the cabin boy, and um, because they were 